When I heard the phrase, go out into the vineyard and work, I thought of, for some reason, my lifetime jobs. First, I worked on a farm. I fed calves with a bucket. Actually, at one time, there was between 25 and 30 that I and my brother and sister would go out and feed. And I remember my dad was in the hospital at the time for about a month. And I took that on, that responsibility on. I remember also doing my homework at school. I, when I was in high school, I bailed hay, and the big job that I had was working at St. Paul's Church. I and John Graff, and we did everything up there from mowing the, the cemetery and the lawns to raking the leaves to painting in the schools and even doing steeplejack work, along with cleaning and maintenance after school of an evening during school, school times. I also worked in Dedden's Bakery and I painted my way through college and raised tobacco. So I painted houses and barn roofs when I was in college and raised tobacco as well. I then became a teacher after college and a cabinet maker, an assistant principal, and then became a parish life coordinator and a deacon. Work gave me a sense of dignity, a sense of purpose, and a sense of doing for myself and especially in helping others. My brothers and my sisters and my friends and uh, my, my co-workers, we all work together. I learned teamwork and what responsibility was. John, Father John Mantle once told me, whatever you do, do well. Today we hear the words echoing again. Go out into the vineyard and work. So what is work? I looked it up in a dictionary, and work is an activity involving mental and physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. So a purpose and a result. So just anything that will achieve a purpose and a, and a result is work. It, work can be labor, it can be toil, it can be exertion, it can be effort. There are tasks, there's jobs, there's duties, and then there's even earnings that people have to make for their own livelihood. All kinds of work, professional and technical, skilled and unskilled, physical and mental, laborious and sitting, ever-changing, repetitive work. Then we get into other things such as hobbies and crafts. They can be work. They are work, especially if you are achieving a purpose or a result. Household work, like dishes, cleaning, helping mom and dad, yard work, gardening, homework, even hunting, fishing, and cooking can be work because we're trying to achieve a goal. Sewing and raising kids. Raising kids is one of the hardest jobs that we will ever have. And it is one of the most important jobs we'll ever have. And another one just, just in line with it also is the hard work of marriage or the hard work of whatever your vocation happens to be if it's not marriage. Work, it is something very important in our lives. Work involves almost everything we do. And don't forget to work on your prayers. Prayers too is work. That is part of what we work on. We work on our prayers daily to make sure that we keep them up and keep them going. It's a big responsibility, one of the greatest ones that we have, is to stay in that communication with God. And the more that we do that, the less it's not painful. It's not painful at all, just like any other work. So not only do we go out into the vineyard to work, but how, how do we go out into the vineyard to work? Do we talk the talk? going to do this, going to do that, going to do this and that, going to do this and that, all these things? Or do we walk the walk? Do we really do what needs to be done? Do we walk the walk when we go out to work? Do we carry out our intentions? One of the greatest phrases I love, I guess maybe because I'm German, is, which deals with work, but St. Augustine says that work is a continuation of creation. I spent today in, a, in one of those uh, vert, 
virt virtual, um, I had a virtual retreat today on the Gospel of John, the prologue. And there's, there's so much that I got from that, dealing with creation even. So St. Augustine said, work is a continuation of God's creation. Use the gifts God has given you to work. He has given us all kinds of gifts, and he gives everyone different amounts of gifts. You know, God, did God create each one of us the same? We're different. Every one of us is different. Every organism, every bird, every piece of God's creation is a little different than the others. It's amazing. I mean, when you start looking at those things, you know that there's got to be a God. Who else could do something like that? So we use the gifts that God has given us. And if it is a gift that God gives us, we love to do it. And if we don't love to do it, there might be something there. Maybe it's not the right fit. Have you prayed about what you're doing and, and what you do? Or is it just an attitude adjustment that you need and looking at work in a different way? If it's a gift from God, we, we love to do it. And keep it as a gift from God. Make it a gift from God. Allow God to help you to determine the work that you're going to do. Allow God to work with you and in you and through you as you do the work all day long, whenever you are working. And teach your children how to work. Begin at age two or even a little younger. They can pick up something. You might have to get down on the floor and help them but make sure that they at least start the motions of doing work as you ask them to do. It's one of the good ways of learning obedience. Do you live to make money or do you make money to live? Do you overwork? Do you remember to keep holy the Sabbath day? Treat your job, your work, your life in the vineyard holy. We do it for the honor and glory of God. If we're doing it for God, we do it for his honor and glory. And what a way to pray. What a way to pray is in what we do. In St. Paul to the Romans, in Romans 12, it states, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And what do we do with that? We bring it to the Holy Eucharist. We bring it to the Mass. We bring it to the Mass. And in Thanksgiving, we offer it up to God, what we did in Thanksgiving. And then with all of our gifts that are brought forward. And then it is changed into the body and blood of Christ, who we give the glory and honor to. The work that we do is for him, because all that we have comes from him, and all that we do comes from him. Treat your work as a ministry, a ministry serving God, no matter what kind of work you do. A ministry serving God, a ministry serving others, and a ministry serving our church. As we go out into the vineyard to work and go out walking the walk instead of talking the talk, let us change our way as the first son who said, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. Maybe we can change our views on what work is a little bit, and enjoy work, take pride in our work, find glory in our work, be glad that we have work, be glad that we can have that work. You know, when I was that little kid growing up, that, that work, as I mentioned, gave me a sense of dignity, a sense of purpose, and a sense of responsibility, and taking on different challenges that are put before me. That is what work does. It gives us so much. It's a return. It's, a, it's something that God gives us.
So let us see work as part of God's plan as a living sacrifice as we serve him and serve others. Let your work help you to be the best version that you can be. Go into the vineyard. And as we read in the Philippians today, go out in the same attitude you find in Jesus. Go out in the same attitude you find in Jesus. When you go to work, go out into the vineyard with the same attitude that you find in Jesus. And in the Psalm and in Ezekiel, we hear we should go out and humbly live with goodness, kindness, justice, and witness his ways. Go out in the vineyard and serve the Lord, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you.